Well, presenters, welcome back. Coach Tommy, 1424 Basketball Training. Luca, Kyrie, will it work? How good is Luca and Kyrie Irving offense thinking basketball? Let's watch together. Luka Doncic has never played with another high usage score until now. At the trade deadline, Dallas acquired eight-time All-Star Kyrie Irving, and that alone Kyrie, should the be most a minor upgrade from Jalen Brunson player. last year or Spencer Dinwiddie this NBA season. Ever. I say minor because the Mavs offense is already really good with everything orbiting around Luka. Luka Doncic is first in the NBA in time of possession, holding it nearly half the time Dallas has the ball. That's gonna change. And his team's offensive rating when he's on the court is a whopping 121 in the 95th percentile for qualifying players across the league. Irving himself is obviously good enough to run offense through. His teams have been in the 80th percentile or better in offensive efficiency with him on the court for five straight the, seasons, the only... including the 99th percentile last year in Brooklyn in the 29 games he played. Ooh. The only thing wrong with Kyrie, man, is he's too short. He's too small. He's just too little. If uh, you put him in Luka's body, Kyrie probably go down as the best player ever. But... What is he, 6'3"? But is there another level for them to hit together? If he was 6'7", 6'8", he'd be played over played alongside for the world. another high usage score. Brunson and Dinwiddie scaled way back when Doncic was on the floor, but it doesn't look like Kyrie's going to do that. First, Irving can give Luka a rest late in games or at the end of stints. He was gassed the other night in overtime <laughs> after sitting out a few games. So Irving just went to work instead. Second, Kyrie's more active in transition, pushing the pace to score himself or drawing some attention so he can free up teammates. And third, and most importantly, is how dangerous Irving can be away from the ball. He actually he's not knows really how to move without the ball. He's a driven player like Steph Curry, but he's an incredible shooter when he's left open and he's dangerous when he catches it on the move. The Clippers do everything to deny him the ball here, and he finally slips out the back door for a pull-up jumper. Dallas likes this very common action where the corner man receives a screen so he can fly up and attack off a dribble handoff action. Against the Clippers, Kyrie realizes they want to deny that handoff by switching and blocking the route, so he cuts it back himself then he can rip the other way, collapsing the entire defense to Kyrie set up a so good smart. from three. This ability to immediately attack on the move or off the catch gives the Mavs an extra dimension while Doncic is on the court. This is pure Luka ball with a spread floor. He Get blows by his me. man and skips it to the corner, and Kyrie is wide open, and that's incredible clutch offense. But Easily Brunson and Dinwiddie weren't three. that far behind Irving as shooters. It's the more dynamic actions when Kyrie is a different animal, with the ball pinging around, where he can attack a closeout well. like this and turn water into wine. In overtime, the Kings trapped Luka, Dallas's spacing is off so no one is really open, but Irving cuts his way into open space, and then he's good enough to make this bonkers drifting three on the other side of the screen. Yeah, yeah. At the beginning of the year, That's we talked about move. how Work much Luka is posting short. up and how hard he is to stop down there. And this is yet another area Kyrie can naturally extend an advantage created by Doncic, either with a catch and shoot three or in a more dynamic spot. Irving doesn't think the wing will have an open look here. He probably misses a deep entry pass to Dwight Powell, but he's so skilled he can stress the defense again and ends up finding Powell with a layup pass. It's anyway. too little to get that pass over Fox. This one's to the bench. Dallas can just play through Irving. He's not the same one-man offense as Luka. I mean, who is? But they can run essentially the same sets with him off the court, only with, in theory, slightly better results than Brunson or Dinwiddie. Very and similar when style, I say the just same actions, very different I mean, some skills. Some of these are identical. Luca loves to come off screens and then blend a shot into a lob. And in his fourth game in Dallas, Kyrie works off a pick, 
for a little floater into a lob. Earlier this year, we looked at Luca's behind the back pass in pick and roll when a second defender jumps at him. And imitation is the sincerest form of flattery because Kyrie busted this out against the same coverage it's as not well. not that hard. You should be practicing that pass. We're on this incredible tour of a trophy um, Norwegian town. But we yeah, to I called it the loner challenge. Walk up and down a court. Whispering from behind a troll. Right, walk up and down the court and um, pass it against the wall back to yourself. If you can pass it against the wall and catch it with one hand back to yourself, you're going to be a pretty good behind the back or decent passer. So I called it the loner challenge. Try it out. I think Irving's quick actions Both are key to the ceiling of this offense because Dallas has these beautiful game possessions where the ball hot potatoes around to find the best shot. Here's one where Kyrie and Luca both start off ball. Powell ends up recovering it and flipping it to Irving, who instantly moves it so he can find an even better shot. But instead of settling, Josh Green explodes into open space for an old-fashioned three-point play. I don't play. know if that's settling or playing Green your percentages. Green is a perfect fit in this offense to me because he's so good at making quick decisions that capitalize on the advantages created by Doncic and Irving. He's averaging 14 points and three assists per game as a starter and the is an extremely efficient scorer. And he's one of those guys who buzzes around the court doing little things that provide value. Need slashers. In a recent video, we discussed them. cutting and attacking off the catch, and this Run is a big part of Green's game, Watch that Giannis which video. is perfect next to elite playmaking. Irving flows into a pick and roll, the wing defender stays home to help, so Green fires himself out of a cannon, then instantly skips Matt across used court to, do this to a pretty shooter. Good. This time it's Luca backing down a smaller Zion. guard. The help comes, so he whips it over to Green, Trouble who Luka. touches it over to the corner, only for it to come back to him so he can attack the closeout and finish. This one's a Kyrie back cut that draws defenders, and Josh will also use ball fakes in these situations, shedding two men oh, Rudy. in to score. His explosive I drives like are helpful for Dallas, because their other 3 and D players rarely get downhill and spot ups are easier to defend. Whereas Green adds an- Watch like all of these abilities when I talk about dribbling is like the least important. All of his stuff comes off of regular pound dribbles. Other dimension, moving here, immediately looking for a shooter, but finding a layup instead. In addition to that filthiness, Josh uses that maniacal speed to get out and transition. And when Luka was injured last week, the Mavs played with far more pace because Kyrie is naturally dangerous when he's out and running. On the other hand, Luka doesn't really run that much, so it'll be interesting to see if they can play faster when they're both out there. Some of that is a lack of conditioning right now, which of course shows up on the defensive end, which is the big question for this team. Doncic can be flat-footed on the ball, and he doesn't offer much at the rim either. And last year, Dorian Finney-Smith... If you're asked to do everything on the offensive end, um, you would definitely think he's not going to do much on defense. you got to conserve your energy for offense. Really helped protect... Can Luka run? Um, probably in spurts, but you have to train that. Luka in the playoffs, but he's no longer with the team. You have to train that mentality Green to take could off. could help a little here. Because he's had really a impressive finisher, possessions not a staying with smaller guards like this, but he's also big and strong enough to stick with some of the heftier wings in the Western Conference, like Kawhi Leonard. Maxi Kleba was also key last year in Dallas's playoff success, and he's been out with a hamstring hey, injury, and PG. he can provide some paint size in their small lineups. And with Irving, we've already seen lineups without any big men at all pairing Kyrie with the 6'4 Frank Milikina in the backcourt in an attempt to outscore Rudy Gobert's Wolves. Coach Jason Kidd understands that this team is built to outscore opponents just by treading water on defense. We're here to outscore people. <laughs> Jay Kidd keeping it real, I love it. People come to see points, not, not, not uh, 80 to 80. We're here to score. This is the new NBA. Um, the interior defense, we'll, we'll figure it out. He used to be Personally, such a defensive-minded coach. My fascination with Dallas is 
I love Jason Kidd. He's one of my favorite players. Now he's one of my favorite coaches because he keeps it real, man. He's going to be in the in the huddle still preaching defense and stuff like that, but you got to be real strategic around around how much effort you put into your defense, especially with your team makeup. Still about Luka and whether Change. he can expand his offensive game to make it faster and more dynamic. Change and evolve, man. If Dallas is going to be historically great on offense, Doncic probably needs to cut out some of these difficult step backs. You need to cut out some carbs. I also is wonder what if he can do. be quicker when the defense is scrambling. Here he relocates to the line, stops for a second instead of exploding off the catch, and that lets the defense recover. That doesn't so the stop. Kings oh my god, this is so scrambling. Here he relocates to the line, stops. For He's not going to be able to get that thing off because if he shoots it, it's going to get smashed. For a second, instead of so he pump fakes to get that guy exploding off the too close, and then he's going to attack catch, there. And that lets the defense recover, so the Kings are ready for this second drive. The pass is late, and it's a turnover. This kind of issue popped up at the end of the Minnesota game, <clears throat> where Dallas needed. Luca will always struggle with the faster player. The bigger player, no, he can use his body and, and his skills, but the faster, quicker guy that gets underneath him, it's going to be harder for him to deal with, especially when he's farther on the perimeter. You, you can keep him out there. Um, if he posts you up, then you're in trouble. The three, and Luca should probably float toward this open space on the wing. He doesn't, and so the Wolves' athletic guards have less ground to cover going back and forth, and the play just dies out. Compare that to this play. Luca's got to learn how to move rotation. off the ball a little bit. Kyrie touches it to Luca, who instantly attacks the closeout, and that gets him an easy layup. I also think the Mavs can run more actions with Doncic and Irving screening and handing it off together, because no. I think this is how they unlock something truly great. As things stand, I'm not sure how dangerous I'd consider Dallas, but. If Luca evolves and Kid extends the playbook, we may be in for some basketball alchemy. Either way, I'm looking for that Kyrie shot was probably the second hardest shot I've ever thought seen in the NBA. The first was Kobe against Dwight Howard in the uh, finals, Orlando. Dwight Howard, Kobe coming across the lane with a crazy one where he fell on the floor, um, and then that one, Kawhi Leonard. Oh my God, that was so sick to just how far this offensive experiment ultimately takes Dallas in the playoffs. Ooh, Let me know. Well, um, I would love to watch the Mavericks, but uh, the Suns also have something crazy going with KD, Booker, and Chris Paul. <coughs> um, a lot of crazy, crazy dynamic dual scores, I guess. You have uh, Kawhi and Paul George as well, just, just in the West. So which two will uh, be the best? I don't know. But does this experiment work? I mean, it'll be exciting. Do I think they win? Hell no. Not even close. Kyrie is just, he's just too small. Um, Luka is great in his own right, but his biggest weakness is his, his quickness. And then he doesn't have anybody to uh, back him up. So he'll be carrying a lot of the load. Him and Kyrie Irving will go back and forth. Um, are either of them dominant enough? I don't think so. I think Luka needs... Um, help but in the form of somebody bigger bigger and on the inside um, Luke already plays slow so you need to go all in on the uh, slow ball instead of picking up somebody that can speed you up in spurts and uh, I now that I think about it I don't think it'll work it'll be exciting to watch but will it work I don't think so what do you guys think let me know um, too many problems uh, or too many you gotta go all in on a strategy, and I think they're kind of doing a, a blend here, and, and usually that doesn't work. Until next video, take 14 minutes, 24 seconds, or 1% of your day to get better. Peace.